What's up, everybody? Welcome to Wits End Podcast. I am your host, Devin Witt, alongside my co-host, Joe The Show. And, uh, you know, today we kind of had a a little bit of some new topics that that have just come up, I I feel like, over the weekend. I mean, some of it you could say you could have foretold beforehand, but (laughs) uh, not this latest one, which I, I really wanted to start the show with talking about the New Mexico governor, uh, this lady is bananas wanting to put a emergency order in place to suspend people's First and, and Second Amendment rights uh, in Albuquerque, New Mexico. So she did try to clarify and say it's just that city specifically because it meets the requirements. But, man, that's how it starts. Yeah, I mean, you know... This- I don't. I don't guess. I don't understand from a city, uh, even state level, how you could infringe on you know federal law. I, you know, I'm not a lawyer, so I don't know all these type of things. But as far as a federal, you know, Second Amendment rights, you know how like yeah, and, and, and like who who dictates you know what that emergency is that would say okay, give up your guns for a week. Yeah, like I don't. I don't understand the premise behind. It. I've read a little bit about it, but yeah, it makes it, it makes no sense to me. Like. Okay, yeah, clearly on a state level, no. I And I think that's kind of the, the crazier aspect of this is that you even have other hardcore Democrats who are like for uh, gun change and, and stuff like that, making gun reform laws. Mm-hmm. And even they're coming out and saying like, hey, this is not constitutional and a state does not have the authority to you know, rescind the Bill of Rights. <laughs> right. Yeah, I mean, she shouldn't be able to. Um, because the thing of it is, w- the way I'm looking at that is she comes out and she says, okay, under certain circumstances, um, we would be able to come in and suspend your Second Amendment rights, you know, say even temporarily, um, is what she's saying. So to do that, you know, my first question is, like I said a minute ago, what is actually the emergency would do that? Because to, to me, what the Democrat Party would do is create an emergency like they've done with other things um, and, and cause something so they can come in and execute that. The other thing of it is, is then what would happen to have to retract from that. So if they put in a state in emergency and say, okay, we're stopping, I, I don't even know how they do that. Like, okay, we're going to confiscate everybody's guns for two weeks and you come and get them back. I mean, you know, so you put in this, you know, you enforce this second amendment thing where they, where you can't buy guns, you can't sell guns, you can't have guns, you know, in this state of emergency, but like, okay, what stops from getting it back? Cause that's, what's going to happen in the United States. Whenever they try, when some stupid president tries to enforce martial law, it's not the fear of martial law necessarily. It's like, when did they ever decide to say, Hey, this is, this is enough. And, and the thing of it is things have proven already that way in society. I mean, like how long are we going to be in this pandemic? You know, see, it's like, okay, the signs are done. Like this thing is, you know, whatever. And that's not what the topic is today. But see, the thing is like nobody will, nobody will say, hey, hey, we're done. Like, and I understand it's not done. Like the, this disease is gone. But it's like, hey, this is not what it was two or three years ago. You know? Yeah. So and it's like, who's going to call this off? I, I, one of the more encouraging aspects of this is I, I think it's going to be the people. You know, as, as soon as this started catching fire on the internet, which it should, uh, you know, to, to expose someone to say something like that about serving, especially in, in such a high leadership position. But whatever, uh, there was people that were exercising their Second Amendment right by carrying weapons openly uh, in the area in protest mm-hmm. of her emergency order. So I, I think that's uh, kind of what it's going to take, really, is direct pushback from the people and and not just you know on the streets but also in the voting booth you right. know and making sure that they are voting for candidates that are actually gonna be for the people uh, and and that's the only way you can make it happen yeah if so you, basically what you you're can. saying is vote vote for candidates it's for the people so essentially what you're saying is you can't vote for anybody uh, no I, there's there's not people <laughs> then the candidates out there they're all freaking politics it's all about money they ain't they, they don't care I mean like I haven't seen a politic in my lifetime, and, and, and you know, I, I'm probably sure I'm wrong on this, but I'm going to state because how I feel about it. Like, I haven't seen a politic say, like, hey, man, I am going to represent my people 100% and not buy into all this political agenda, the, whether it be, the, you know, the media, whether it be the pandemic, whether it be in, money is, is obviously a big one, and, and play into some form of politics. Like, I see it so many times. Like, I've seen people, and I've even voted for them, they're like, really good, like, hey, these are good people, until they have that power <laughs> Um, whether it be a House, Senate, you know, whatever the case may be, 
you know, my particular people I know is like house seats. Um, and, and they compromise. They, they're not yeah. representing the people. Okay. I, I, and in fairness to what you're saying about being a part of that system, it's inevitable. You're 100% right, but I, I kind of feel like there is a movement right now. Uh, it's very grassroots and uh, unorganized, but there's this uh, will of the people to pull away from mainstream media and mm-hmm. like conventional ways of holding debates and, and stuff like that and how we consume information. And so I'm kind of wondering if altogether we pull away and kind of create our own way of doing politics where it is actually not career politicians that are owning the debate stage because they're getting all the money necessary to be able to campaign right. at that level. But it's like more grassroots, if that makes sense. I I totally see it coming uh, of some type of revamp to the system to kind of benefit people more than possibly it's not happening in this election cycle this no, one is coming all. down to i mean you know, I'm, not, I'm not jumping too far into the topics but you know it's not happening this election cycle we're not we're not talking about that quite yet we'll get to that in a minute but with this i mean this is one of those things that people you know they put her in office bottom line is if she's doing this stuff get her out of office i mean she's not looking out for the best interest of the people you know at, at a minimum you know, like people, hey, let's face it. These are facts, not something I just came up with today or ever, you know, like this has been coined by many people before me. The, the criminals ain't giving up their guns. Like they're going to get them regardless. You can outlaw every gun in the United States and take them every, you can take every one of them. They're still going to exist. They're still going to, you know, it's it's out there. It's, well, they're going to they're gonna come out, you know, and the funny. thing of it is, like, how are you going to stop it? Because they can't even control the borders. So you think you're going to stop guns from coming into america you can't even control the borders either so there's there's so many there's so many levels of this that is just screwed up it's wrong it's not ever going to work well and and you saying that exact point of our criminals going to stop using weapons she was asked that question at the press conference where she's saying all this and she flat out said no so it's like Mm -hmm. then what's the point if you know that criminals are still going to use the weapons then why would you want to take it away from someone who could potentially take care of business for themselves or others right. and then what rely on our cops we've seen we've seen how society that's working out so far right i mean they don't yeah. they don't they don't even police their own um there's too many corrupt cops i'm not saying they're all corrupt I, i'm not getting yeah. on that bandwagon I, well, too bad i already am i guess um the cops ain't gonna take care of us and the thing of it is even even if every cop in the united states 100 was good we also know that we're all, you know, pretty much all understaffed, you know? So like, what are you going to do? And underpaid. You know, like I'm going I'm to kill you with my kitchen knife, you know? Okay. You're staring down a barrel of a gun from somebody breaking in your house, wherever that scenario may be. What are you going to defend yourself with? You oh. know, it's not about, it's not about necessarily having guns. Yes. Hunting and stuff like that. Um, but it, it's to protect ourselves. And, and even then it's like not so much protect ourselves from each other, even as much as it is from the government itself. Listen, I mean, look at our government, the way they're taking care of us so far. Look at how they've taken care of America through this pandemic. Let's just use that as an example. I'm not about, I'm not trying to get into you're vaccinated, you're not, none of that. Look at how they've taken care of the people. Let's, let's, let's maybe take it a step further to a more recent one. Let's see how the government, um, and I hope the president's watching this, let's see how the government has taken care of Hawaii. I'll send you $700 a month. You lost your freaking house. You lost millions of dollars in assets, and we're going to send you $700 a month. That's the people I want looking out for my best interest and my family when my when I'm pushed up against the wall in, in a matter of life and death situation, a person that don't even care to be on the scene. Since I'm already on that, let's talk about 9-11. Where's he at? 9-11, one of the biggest terrorist acts in the United States, and he's not even visiting not even paying no attention to anything regardless regarding to 9-11. Instead, he'd rather be sitting in Anchorage, Alaska. This is out there, people. It's not just something I, I have like an inside information of the president. This is information out there. So the president of the United States can't even show up on scene when a crisis hits the United States of America, and then one that's been you know, 20 plus years old, a big one in the United States, and so many thousands of veterans, or I say veterans, people have lost their lives fighting that war, and you don't even give a rat's ass to even show your face. You'd rather sit on vacation yet again in, in, in Alaska. Well, but it, it's very symbolic of the times. Uh, you know, we're, we're shifting politically, at least, where it's no longer about what individual, whether you're a veteran or a, a voter or not, doesn't matter. If it's not directly benefiting them, then they're not not really here for it. And, you know, it's sad to say that there are 
good examples of people that are at the very least trying to do the right thing. Will they succeed? I don't know. That's politics. Uh, but, you know, it, it's very sad that we do have someone like Joe Biden in office, you know, can't speak at any kind of a function event, always on vacation during tragedies. Uh, and, you know, to kind of take it a step further about the Lahaina situation and, you know, Hawaii, $700 payments to them, you know, these families who have lost everything can't even go back to their homes, some of them. And, that, at least that's what I'm seeing. Well, I mean, look at this inflation that he's causing in his presidency. Seven hundred dollars won't even buy food. Well, and I mean, a, a, so this is what it is. There's layers to it. Number one, you're talking about the most expensive place to live in America, Hawaii, hands down. Nobody's going to disagree with that. And you're sending them seven hundred bucks. And then at that same time period, you're and this is after you do the seven hundred dollar payment. You ask for twenty four billion dollars to go to Ukraine, right? And, and and not to mention, you know, not to mention even that too. You know, you then you got, it, it, this this can go so many different directions yeah, here. It's, it's like because good. we're sending all this money to Ukraine, and then you know, right now in the background, a lot of you got a stuff with North Korea and Russia meeting up. Like, guess what? You should have saved oh. your money because we're probably going to be fighting World War Three. You know, like <laughs> I, I don't I don't know that for sure. Yeah. But like Russia and North Korea meeting up and having meetings. Okay, it, it it's not good. Like somebody has to do something about this, and instead, it, it, he's not. I guarantee you. It, I guarantee you. Mark my words on this. If something happened, there's a fa- nuclear fallout. There's some world event going on. He's not even going to be here. Well, that's the problem. He will not be here for it. I think he actually said that climate change is more of a threat to the Earth than a nuclear war or a nuclear exchange. That's ignorant. I mean, that's if, just if it, if the temperature raises by like one and a half degrees Celsius. It raises that all the freaking time. I mean, like, I don't know, Celsius to Fahrenheit, it's, it's freaking hot, yeah. you know? Like, and then it's, it's cold. Every time it's like, oh, global warming, the ice is melting. Like, I, I you know, I don't Near care. Record. Like, the ice is not going to, the polar cat, they're not going to melt in my lifetime. Okay, however, a nuclear freaking war can. Like, yeah. that. that's a reality. Yep. And, day. you know, like, I'm not trying to get on, like, okay, Donald Trump and, and Biden. But at, least, at least Donald Trump at least had communications with Paul Long, Dally, whatever his name is, you know, from North Korea, I can't even pronounce the name, I don't even uh, freaking care. Kim Jong-un. Yeah. Goon. Goon <laughs> sounds good to me. Yes. So, yeah, I don't know. I mean, Chill. yeah, stupid dad joke, I guess. But, you know, like, at least there were some efforts made, like, you know, whatever those might have been, how pro- progress it was. But, like, these are things going on. I'm not saying he's not doing anything about it. But we're talking right now. we got stuff going on in Hawaii. We've got 9-11. Government shutdown. And he's on vacation. He's on vacation. Well, like, and this is the things that, you know, we, we talk about these things in politics that are wrong, unconstitutional, stuff like that. You know, the thing of it is these people work for us. I don't care if you feel like you shouldn't be in office for 90 days or your sitting term and you have to go to your, your, your freaking job three months of the dang year and do your job. You know what you should, what you should do is no vacations, no going out of country, no, none of this stuff until you solve the problems here in the United States. And once those problems are solved, then you can worry about all these foreign matters and everything else. And I think there's a little bit maybe... I kind of even look like a biblical principle in that too, because you know, like when you talk about the great commissions, it, you know, it's, you know, you start here and you work your way out, yeah. you know, like in witnessing people, well, I, you know, I know it's not the same thing, but like to me, that's the same concept. Yeah. Fix your problems here at home first, and then we'll try to worry about everybody else's problems. It'd be nice. Yeah. You know, well, that's the way I, it should think, work. These people a lot of should be sitting down there dealing with this stuff day in, day out. No sleep. I don't care until this is resolved and quit bickering and fighting and putting American people hostage over a government shutdown. Well, he's got to take naps. Okay. So, well, I don't know what it'd matter because you can't remember half the crap anyway. But, you know, to kind of your point about, you know, serving the people and whatnot, that's kind of what, what really scared me with the New Mexico governor is that you have any American Republican or Democrat that would be, uh, so heinous to think that they can go over the Bill of Rights and the Constitution to enact any kind of an emergency, especially on a state level, uh, and and have zero remorse and think that they're going to be on the right side of history for doing that. And I've seen some good theories about it. Like uh, a lot of people say, you know, there's a reason why they only made it 30 days instead of longer than that. 30 days for what? Uh, for this emergency. Okay, gotcha. Because yep. they're they're trying to cut down on high crime, right? So, uh, particularly gun violence. So, anywho, you know the the reason why they only want to do it for thirty days is because test if, the waters. 
it to <laughs> kind of let it go under the radar because even if it expires or no one actually does anything with it, like for instance, there's the sheriff who said, I'm definitely not enforcing this because it's too close to violating the constitution. Yep. And then another guy who said he feels uneasy, which I feel like is a coward's way of putting it, but that basically he didn't want to do it either. Yeah. Um, but if that's the, what it the comes point of it though, I guess what I'm trying to get at is if they don't like if nobody pushes back to it judiciously or through the legal system, mm-hmm. then that could set a precedence for someone else to come in later right. and and do it even longer and then say, well, no one's challenged us before. Right. And, th- and this is that's precisely I mean, kind of what you said, that's precisely why the government hasn't tried that crap, because the only way they can enforce taking everybody's guns uh, involuntarily is they're going to have to activate the military to have them do it. And you're going to have a lot of people It's like, they're like, no, no, I'm not, you know, by contract, I'm not supposed to go against American people anyway. Yeah. But you're going to have like the sheriff's department, state officials, you know, we're like, no, you're not doing that. You know, Oklahoma is one of them. We've already got laws passed, you know, like medical marijuana. Um, you know, the, the governor said, you know, okay, your, your firearm status and, you know, medical marijuana card holder does not, you know, there's no problem. That, yeah, now, I honestly know those are here. federal, excuse me, federal laws that requires to the background check, paperwork, stuff like that. Um, so, I mean, I do understand that, you know, okay, federally, but the thing of it is people have to understand federally, unless you probably do something really crazy or heinous, it's probably never going to get questioned. And the reason being is the reason I say that is because it opens up a can of worms that they don't want to deal with. It's not because they don't want to make an example. It's because it opens up a can of worms because the thing of it is, see, for instance, let me give you a, a, a what if federally marijuana is illegal everywhere in the United States, yeah. but here we are operating in all these states illegally and what's the federal government doing about it nothing because it's money so they're they're play, it's hush money it, you call it what you want but see the thing of it happy. is but see the thing of it is the bigger issue here is once they crack down on one of them on a federal charge for being illegal see how many doors that opens up to every grow processor dispensary in the united states yeah. that that's legally operating within that state but you see the can of worms that opens up well the same thing with guns once you do that and you set that federal precedence, you open up this door that, it, and the thing of it is, it involves hundreds of thousands, millions and millions of people, and you've got a big problem on your hands. So there's reasons they don't do that, but it's, again, it's a prime example. Hush money, that's what it is. It's extortion. It's a fancy way, you know, extortion is such a bad word, but it's what it is. It's like, hey, we're, we're going to turn up. They do it every day. It's politics. And they do it to us every day. Politics is this. Hey, we'll give you this if you shut your mouth. That's what happened with Hunter Biden and Joe Biden right now. They were talking about the weather. It didn't ever happen. It's hush money. Same thing here. The, you give them your tax money. You pay your pay taxes pay. on the yeah. and whatever. And they're like, hey, we're just not going to force that. Right. Yeah. You Or you don't pay taxes, but you donated to our amazing fund. Well, that's what I'm saying. But the thing <laughs> it is, if you don't pay taxes on this stuff, guess what they're going to do? They're going to come after you for tax invasion yep. on something that's federally illegal. Yeah, see, and only select people get. It's messed up. Only select people get charged on that, so, especially yeah, where I, mean, I was gonna like where you were saying you can all apparently that. have cocaine and not even get in trouble with it. I mean, it's again yeah. proven unless you're a political opponent, and that's the the kind of the key to it, in my opinion, is that if we're not careful, you know, like this, it doesn't take much. You know, if another pandemic happens and they say, you know, we need to go back to wearing masks again. And they're trying that. Or, you know, it, it should be mandatory for everyone to get the vaccine mm-hmm. or whatever the, the case is. You know, that that's what what's scary is like it, if people comply to it again. You know, whereas if you see what happened less than three years ago, you know, why, why would you want to go back to that? Especially with all the hurt and, and harm that's been caused as a result. Uh, and the misinformation and the disinformation and the silencing of real information uh, has gone not talked about. You know, like I think there was a, a case out of Missouri where the uh, state won against Joe Biden for censoring uh, information and violating the First Amendment right by forcing big tech to take down posts that they felt like took away from the narrative that they wanted the American people to know. So it's like direct interference, unlike anything ever. Yeah. Well, I mean, I'm not surprised at all on that. I mean, barely even gets talked about. There's so so much interference from politics. You know, again, you got Donald Trump facing charges. Is what it is. I think someone's real. Someone's probably bogus. And and again, I'm not advocating right or wrong. I don't don't really care at this point with that. 
it's just, you know, the thing of it is like, why are you hanging this dude out to dry per se? Because we all know just as much, I guess let me put it this way. There's much as facts into what Donald Trump has done as there is about Democrat parties funding riots well, and funding, making problems. But yet it's like, okay, now Trump did it and people invaded the white house. Then now it's an issue. I'm like, I'm just like, let's play on the same field here. Like if he did it, he's wrong. You know, he should be in trouble for it. If he did it, you know, it just is what it is. The law of the land he should be in trouble for it. But hold the other people accountable too. And qu- and people need to quit. And, and again, it's so easy to sit here and say, talk about Biden and Hunter Biden about riding his daddy's coattail, but that's what this is. He's riding his daddy's coattail. He did stuff as a vice president and it's not a big deal for Joe Biden that he lost these documents or they were, Oh, they, I didn't know those documents were in my house. Well, how in the heck do they get there? You know, all that stuff. He returned them on but, time. Well, the thing of it is he had them. He shouldn't have had, you know, <laughs> exactly. president, you know, or former president Trump facing similar charges. I'm like, dude, just keep it. Okay, if you're going to charge him, charge him, but you charge the other guy too. I, and it's probably the best thing for the country if they both were just impeached and moved on to somebody else. I don't know if it, if it would be, honestly, because I, you know, here's the thing. Donald Trump kind of breaks the mold of any other politician because no matter where he's at or what platform he uses, he gets attention and people talk about him. You know, so having a guy like that in a position where he could win, Mm -hmm. you know, that's where you have to match him up with the right person. And I think everyone at this point knows it's not Joe Biden. Right. And that's why I think they're going to come out with Michelle Obama. Uh, It's been rumored. I don't don't know. Look, I I saw a headline because nobody reads anything, but I saw a headline that said sources close to Michelle Obama well, said that she's going to run for 2024. I mean, it, when you really think about it, it's really not such an inconceivable idea. And people are like, oh, you know, she, you know, one, she's female. And I'm not trying to get a race game here. Oh, she's a black female. It makes it that much harder and all this other stuff. But it's really not. It's really not so such an inconceivable idea because there's still an unproven kind of theory out there that Ob- Obama is still calling the shots behind the scenes as it is. And he's got Biden under his freaking thumb. So it's not such an inconceivable idea that she would run Well, and uh, based off that theory. And that's the thing is, if anyone's really paying attention, Barack Obama is definitely involved with the administration. And so to have your wife run and continue again for mm-hmm. another four years, so that's 16 years at that point, I think, of him being involved directly with the White House. That's a long time. Yeah. That's half a, a career almost. Uh, well, I just think there's, I think she's has but, some obstacles because she would be the first female, which Hillary got, I mean, she came close. I mean, she was pretty close and I'm not, and again, I, I said this, but I'm not trying to be, I mean, I think there's an obstacle that could work and I, it's, it's not an obstacle. I think it is for a lot of people in America is because, and they don't want to say it and, I, and I'll say it, you know, they, they won't say it because she's black. It, it is what it is. You know, people can sit here and play like, oh, I'm not racist. That's not a factor. Bulloni. It is too. And I think it's an obstacle she'd have to overcome. You know, I don't, I don't care if she's black, white, green. I don't care what color she is. You know, if, if they, if they fit, you know, I don't care if it's female, if, you know, we have to go off what they say, you know, actions too and stuff like that. But I mean, if, if that was the best choice, um, and I, and I tell you right now, I'm not for her, but I guarantee I'd vote for her before I vote for Biden. Well, and that's what the, I think the point of it is. So, you know, at the end of the day, Joe Biden, he's tanking in like every demographic, every age group. You know, everyone's seen the decline in him, and so polls are are going down. Mm -hmm. And so if you are the Democrat Party or someone who wants to continue power, you would definitely have to be looking at another candidate. You can't really look at Gavin Newsom because of California, and I don't think anyone could smile and say that San Francisco is a great place to live, Uh, you know, or Los Angeles or... All the I don't know. That they I, have I'm just looking on. at politicians but, right now. All you got to do is play the race card and the LGBTQ card. You're getting votes, and and they do it. They do it all the time. But right that, now, because of the climate, it watch the closer we get to election, these things are going to resurface. So that and that's the thing is like you while you say it's a disadvantage to to be a black and and a woman. I, I disagree. I don't mean it. Let me like, clarify that because I don't want pe- I don't want people getting the wrong idea about that. I'm not saying it's because oh you're black you're a disadvantage. I'm just saying. America is still racist. And that's, and that is all I'm simply saying by it. Like you have obstacles you have to have. And there is still Mel Chauvin. I didn't say Mel Chauvin is be the right word. Yeah, They're like totally. woman president. Like yeah. it's, it has nothing to do. Like it's I don't care. Job. It's just there, there's still 
hurdles, and and I think I think people black people would agree with this. There is hurdles black people still in today's society have to overcome. And that's totally. all I'm saying by yeah. this. It ain't because, oh, you're black, you'll never be president. No, that is not what I'm yeah, saying. I'm saying that. there is obstacles that a person of color is going to have to overcome. And I think also because she's a female, there's a lot more she would have to overcome to be the president of the United States. Yeah, especially with her previous husband being a president. You know, so, so anything that he's ever done wrong is now going to be on you. And that's actually kind of a, a funny thing is I do feel like there's a couple skeletons in the closet that they make. You remember the the, the Epstein? Chef? Oh, sorry, <laughs> different president. No, maybe uh, the same one. Bill Clinton. <laughs> yeah, I'm sure. I'm, I'm sure they flew a couple times. But anywho, no, the I've heard a, a couple stories, and I, how true any of this is, I don't know because what can you believe anymore? Uh, but did you see anything about this personal chef dying a couple weeks ago? Yeah, Obama's, yeah. Yeah, Mm -hmm. unexplained. Yeah. Yeah, so, okay, that happens. Well, then Tucker Carlson does his little expose where he brings up a supposed or alleged former lover of Barack Obama who said that he did crack slash cocaine, uh, and they did things together <laughs> but see the thing of it is i'm like i understand like how bad so that wait, looks okay, hold on Sorry. and and so now here we go now michelle's got to come out and so i can't help but wonder like if some of this stuff has been coming out here recently or you know more attention's being brought on it because she's actually potentially about to come in possibly man i look at this stuff with the president and i think that they would have some more respect if they were just like yeah man i was like 20 years old I was in college yeah man i, I was smoking crack well, that yeah, just he, be straight up. He admitted like, to the crack, but he hasn't admitted to the being a loving gay intercourse. Uh, well, and here's I, another I didn't thing. hear that. I don't, so I don't a, know. There was a letter that came out in which he stated that in his mind he likes to think about making love to men all day. Something, From him, yeah. yeah. I, I don't know to, I to his girlfriend. I haven't. Um, Caught wind of that, I, and probably not something I'd probably look into because again, how do you how do you know? I mean, like, there's so much stuff like out there, like Whoopi Goldberg getting sued like fifty billion dollars. Like Whoopi Goldberg's got money, but she ain't got no fifty billion dollars. Yeah, you know she's getting sold, you know, sued by you know Bud Light, like all the crap. I mean, I'm just saying, like, I already know when I read that, I was like, this is BS. And so much of that stuff happens, like, and what I'm saying by all that is like, you, it's hard to tell. Yeah, like it, what's it what's truth and what's error, and that's a problem. Like you know, we get into these elections, we get into all the even the stuff we're talking about today. You know, is with this you know senator trying to, or this governor trying to do this stuff to you know Michelle Obama, you know, trying to be president, you know, whatever. Like I don't know. I mean, like we we can only we can only get fact checked so much. You know, like and I and I've looked into the thing with Michelle Obama right now. It's not a you know you're like there's people that's closer saying she might, but like she's kind of said like I don't want to, like I'm not going to. But, you know, we've heard that from other candidates, yeah. too, and then here they are. You know, so, Someone's going to have to. So, That's the thing. It, it won't be Kamala Harris. She, she's worse than Joe Biden, which is hard to do. Uh, but somebody's going to have to do it, and I don't think people want Hillary. It's hard to say um, at this point, man, with the, with the election. I mean, it, it, it's hard. You know, I mean, it's not the topic today, but it's such a, it's such a controversial issue, and it will be for some time. You know, we're going to talk about it, I'm sure, several more times because it's, it's something that's going to change the, well, you know, the course of— One more thing that I, I don't think Michelle— may be ready to fire back with is this conspiracy about is she actually big mike she might be i mean and again in today's society if she was i'm saying if she was if she just played that card and said yeah i mean i'm, I'm transgender i i i See, i you know she would did all that. yeah she would be like this first and and on top of that she would be the first female black president Gay president, <laughs> yeah. she's like check, 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 because yeah. that's Everything. what that's what America Everything. wants. It's all the checks in the box, yeah. and she would be, oh, she's a perfect representation of everybody in America. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> no, feminine, you're not, but strong. <laughs> like, I'm, but I'm just saying, like, if she did that, there is a ploy, there's a there's a it's pool huge. of people that would be like, oh yeah, yeah. we got to get her, and there's people that's going to do it anyway. The Democrats would totally vote for that. Well, most of them, I'd, I'd say, probably on board with it, you know, and then she yeah. can start because. That would Man, swing an election. Like the thing, that that, the thing is with the thing is with her. She does a lot of stuff like with kids. I mean, I, I, I as a president, I don't know, but as what well, like I see her do publicly and stuff, I, I, I have I have some respect for her. I'm not going to say it's just yeah. overwhelming, but she does stuff with the kids, and I mean that's where it's at, you know. And you know, people can talk crap on Obamas all they want to. I feel like they do more for people than the current president. 
Well, so I'm not saying I'm, I would vote for the guy. I'm not saying nah. that he's he's my president. He's my guy. But you know, looking at them, you know, they they are more actively doing stuff and more beneficial things for people in general than currently who is sitting in office. He's a great so, statesman. You know, so I, I have I have built for it. It's just until you ask the question of, you know, where are the uh, baby bump pictures at, you know, like went from when she was pregnant. But see the thing, no man. Pictures. Like you know, I look at those things. I'm like, man. And, I mean, as long and then as you look at the kids, who cares what they do? Who cares if they're swingers at the end of the day? Like, I don't care what they're doing. You know, well, like as long it, as you're right, representing but, the country. Now, like the thing of it is, if they're just out and out with it, like this, yes, this happened. It is what it is. Yeah, I'm okay with that. Now, as a president of the United States, male or female, you're representing a guy one day and a woman the next. Meaning you're back and you know, I don't care. And people can get bent on this one. You're 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 making America look bad. And it's not because you're gay. It's not because you're homosexual. It's because it's like you're a laughing stock of people. I mean, this has been you got for other very that big don't officials to it. exactly. Yeah. And not that we have to adhere to what they believe, right? But, but you're, you're a joke. To be strategic. Like it's a joke. And, and even on just a, say a woman president, there is countries that, that they're ran by men. Period. You you yeah. won't become as a woman, and they look down on you. When you're talking war, war things and strategy stuff like that, to like yeah. you're a woman, yeah. it just it is what it is. You know, it's nothing against them, but it just that's what it is. Well, either way, all of it, Michelle's the best chance the Democrats got, in my opinion. I I think she's the one, especially to go up against Trump. I don't know of anyone else that could beat him. You know, I don't un- know. unless he goes down and is no longer a candidate because of whatever reason. Which in and of itself, in my opinion, spells disaster for the country. Uh, Because, you know, if people aren't paying attention, it's little things. You know, whether it's a 30-day suspension of your Bill of Rights, you know, or locking up a a political opponent because we don't want to lose power. You know, it's like all all it takes is us not paying attention. Yeah. And and it'll be stolen from us before we know it. Well, it already happened. It's it's already happening. And little by little. And they're they're running they're they're running this country to the ground and so far in debt that, that I just don't see a way out other than collapse. And it's not and it's not just Democrats. You know, there's definitely you could throw plenty of Republicans in there. Well, Republicans aren't innocent in this game. Uh, I mean, by no means. But for whatever reason, and and I know there are for sure good Democrats too. I'm not trying to say all name of them are one. Bad. No, I'm just playing. Uh, there's, there's good on both <laughs> right. sides. There's good and bad on both sides. Uh, for sure. And yeah, I'm sure I could think of one, but that would be tough on the spot. But anywho, you know, on the Republican side as well, like I, I just I feel like there's a. And maybe it's because it's just where I stand from a personal ethic standpoint, but it's like for whatever reason, their conservatism on values and you know upstanding the the constitution or whatever, or you know whether it's freedom of speech, freedom of expression, right to bear arms, all of those things, uh, it more and more it's becoming not valued and basically for the sanctity of protection from whatever emergency. We just give it up. For, well, it comes down to control. I mean, all these things come down to we want control, we want control. It goes from what we are to a dictatorship. I mean, that that's simple layman's terms, but it's it's all about control. I mean, why else would you want to take the gun? Oh, we could stop we could stop a couple of school shootings. Okay. Well, what are you gonna do whenever they start stabbing people? What are you gonna do when they start beating them with a hammer? What do you I mean, what are you gonna do? Outlaw construction? It just it's it's <laughs> it doesn't work. Yeah. Like it, like I said earlier in the podcast. You're not going to stop the criminals. They're going to find. They're going to find ways, and, and they and their just focus is completely wrong. I mean, it just sounds so redundant for me to say this, but like, you want to control all the firearms in America, but you can't even control illegal people coming across the border. Yeah. Like, and that's and I know people. There's no correlation. Yes, it is because where do you think some of these illegal, Ill, some not all, illegal stuff is coming from? You have millions of pills of fentanyl coming in, and our government can't even catch it. You know, oh, well, it was in this 20 foot shipping container. Okay, well, that even makes it worse. How do you yeah. miss, you know, how do you miss this? It, it tells me you're not searching it. You know, and I could care less if there's a, if there's a 20, 30, 50, 100 mile wait to get across the border. You know what? You want to come here, that's the price you're going to pay. You're going to wait and you, everything, every person will be searched. It's just, that's how it works. Yeah, if Who you were cares? Actually trying to make it secure. Yeah, and they don't. They're, they're too worried about trying to please people. You know, we got, we've been in, 
you know, I don't know how many, I haven't even looked at the numbers here lately about how many illegal peoples here and stuff like that. You know, like I get it. Let people immigrate here. That's fine. But do it legally. All I'm saying, man, you're not going to control this. You're never going to control it. And that's, that's the thing. They, they shift the focus on the guns. The gun thing is going to, the gun thing is a dead topic for the most part right now. Um, and then it'll be, it'll be the homosexual topic. And then it's going to be the black people. It's going to be revolving around those three until some, it's going to, it just happens like that every time they keep shifting and shifting and shifting until one of them gets traction and then they just freaking ride that thing into the ground. Something, one of those three has got to happen before this election happens so somebody can use that to their advantage or disadvantage. For a distraction. Exactly. It has to happen. The only other element that's probably going to come into that, very debatable right now, is another another pandemic. It, it's just, it's such a hot topic, you know, that, that uh, telling you get this, this get vaccinated. There's also several, you know, people saying don't. I'm not giving my opinion one way or the other, but it th- the talks are already there about making people mask up again and how bad it is, and, and, you know, and, and school shutting down and what are we going to do and all this other crap. It's already there. So the 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 uh, the war front's already started. It's just how far they're going to push this. Yeah, my my question would be: Have you ever heard of Operation Northwoods? Mm-mm. So it, it's basically planning terrorist attacks on America to trick Americans into thinking it was the Cubans so that way they could go and attack them. For, and for what? I mean, another Cuban Missile Crisis? I mean, like, what, what it are we... during that time period. Okay, um, so we're talking... I thought you were talking about now versus... No, okay, no, gotcha. not at all. Uh, yeah, context. That's what I was like, what? Uh, I got, well, yeah, you know, we're, today. now we got a problem with the Cubans. No. Um, but anywho, the, the point of it, though, and... Obviously, they didn't go through with that operation. Apparently, we have an update. Oh, look at that. Give me a second. Modern electronics. Don't worry about it. We're about done anyway. Oh. Yeah, just let it go. People are going to see, hey, yeah, we're not rich. We have to use a stupid computer, but it is what look it is. So, <laughs> I don't know. I mean, I definitely see the government ploying all these different type of little tactics and tricks yeah. as a diversion. So, it's all definitely right. going to happen. It's what is it going to be? And if, they're, if they are willing to go to that extent, then all the more important reason why get out and vote, uh, be mindful of the people that you're putting in there. Cause some of them may be willing to take your rights away yeah. if necessary. Uh, yeah. I mean, she's governor. <laughs> she's probably a chance. She's probably going to try to run, you know, for some, you know, bigger office. They typically do. If she's not impeached. You know, like, yeah, maybe. I don't we'll know. See. I don't know. She's not going to get impeached, but it hasn't been tried. That's what's going to be the thing is when she tries it and actually tries to make this law. I mean, that's what's really going to come down right now. It's talks from what I understand. I don't think she's really tried to say like, we're going to go, we're going to push this a little bit harder and actually try to get this enforced. Um, I think she'll met, met with a lot of resistance, especially, uh, what state is New Mexico? Yeah. Yeah. Um, God, not trying again, play the race card there, him. but, uh, guess what governor, you don't run that land. Yeah. There, there's a lot of natives in New Mexico yeah. and they're going to set you straight. I, I, I just believe that. Um, very proud people, um, in a good way. Yeah. Um, I think that uh, they'll set her straight. Yeah, especially people that have already been disrespected. Yeah. So. All right. Well. So shout out to the president for again not visiting anywhere on nine eleven and enjoying your vacation. Wish I had that luxury of a personal flight everywhere I wanted to go and every catastrophe in the United States just to be gone. Wish I could just not face my problems. You know, it's nice. Let me tell you, uh, what you do is you pretend that you don't know how to talk. Or you just fumble on every one of your sentences, and then you disappear for a couple of weeks. There you go. Recharge. <laughs> all right. Well, thank you all so much for listening. I uh, can't tell you enough how much we appreciate the support. It uh, feels like week after week, you know, it's a, a little bit more, a little bit more. And so if you have any feedback uh, or a topic that you'd like to hear on the show, please let me know. Uh, I, I would love to hear people's perspective on if they think Michelle Obama should run. <laughs> it's pretty simple. I mean, if you don't like your perspective, we won't talk about it. There you go. Fair enough. (laughs) (laughs) All right. Well, with that, thank you all so much. Have a great night.